Hi everyone, today we will start in chapter 1 for topic economic crisis. In this chapter we will study the business cycle and we start with the question why study business cycle? It has been said that capitalist economies are like drunks. They have trouble moving in a straight line, which means it is inherited in the capitalist system that they have ups and downs. Later we call this business cycle. Not only do recessions and depression reduce standards of living and they increase poverty, but they undermine the public confidence in the benefit of capitalism and often democracy. Here we see that this criticism could be coming from socialism system and those systems they already for not the free market, but planet economy. Here we can see that one of the criticism, if there is recessions and depressions in the capitalist system, so capitalism is not working well. As long as capitalism working mainly under democracy, so this is not a good way of ruling. And instead of this, maybe we prefer something like planet economy and dictatorship. The study of business cycles has generally contributed not only to our understanding of economic contractions, but also to our understanding of macroeconomics in general. As long as any change in the business cycle resulted in the whole economy and also because one of these very famous business cycles we call this Great Depression was a reason behind the development of macroeconomics and the Keynesian theory. Modern depressions in East, in East Asia and Japan as well as the recent global financial crisis occurred in 2007-2008 in USA point out that both the validity of much of our present economic theory and also to areas that need to be explored further before economists can completely understand business cycles and enact policies to prevent them. Consistent with the popular conception of economics as a decimal sign, economists clearly secretly long for recessions and depressions, not in a real or concrete sense. For a general rule, economists are not sadists and don't enjoy seeing people suffer through the kinds of hardships suffered by countries that are going through an economic crisis. This month science is already a makeup name given to the economic after the work of Thomas Malthus as he was very discouraged according to the future of the human and he thought that as long as 
population is increasing by a greater growth comparing with economic resources so the only solution of this could be hunger, war, diseases, disease and so on which could result in a death for thousands and millions of people all over the world to be able to return back to a stable situation. Actually, economists, they are not looking to see people suffer, but they are working like doctors. They tell the patient that else this patient will suffer from in the future. They telling bad news to protect the future of this patient. Nothing improves economists' understanding of how markets and macroeconomics work more than an economic downturn. Actually, this is a true statement. Because if everything is going well, there is no depressions or recessions, there is no tendency for economists to think again and again in dips for existing theories, and if they are working well or not. And maybe there is no incentive for them to enhance and develop new theories that could be very useful for the future of human being and for sure for the development of economic theory itself and economic science. The Great Depression played a crucial role in the development of macroeconomics as a separate field of study from that of microeconomics and also in the development of Keynesian economies that most fundamentally change in the way that economists think about the world since 1776 when Adam Smith published Wealth of Nations Keynesian economies in turn spawned some of the most radical developments in public policy since the Industrial Revolution and provided the theoretical foundation for the modern welfare state. Great Depression is an event happened in the period between 1929 and 1933, started in USA, spill over UK, and everywhere in the world, like Japan, from Germany, everywhere. It was very hard time, as all of these economies depressed and declined sharply, measured by economic growth. Massive unemployment, decrease in production, loss of the majority of wealth, and bad conditions for those who stay in hunger. But there is an advantage of this Great Depression is the development of macroeconomics. As before this time, we concentrate in economics in the microeconomics established by Adam Smith after he wrote and published his famous book, Wealth of Nation, in the same year of the independence of USA, in 1776. But after 1933, and exactly in 1936, when John Maynard Keynes, the father of macroeconomics, introduced his new book, The General Theory of Employment, Interest and Money, we have a new baby in economics, 
vehicle this is macroeconomics according to the Keynesian economics the government has a role to play in the economy and we can see that public policy that could used by the government to solve economic crisis as a result of this we found the modern welfare state in Europe and other places of the world the big problem unfortunately is that after more than 200 years of debate there is still no general agreement about what causes recessions and depressions there continues to be multiple competing models of business cycles used among economists in fact there is a large disconnect between models used by academics and those used by private sector economists. Actually, after a very long period, it is about two centuries, and even until now, we don't have a very specific one consensus about reasons behind recessions and depressions maybe we have multiple competing models of business cycles it could be accepted by some economists but actually each one of them has some cones and bones which means adventures and disadventures there is no one complete model and this is normal as long as we speak about the achievement of human for an example of how this agreement persists in macroeconomics we consider the recession happened in USA between 1990 and 1991 some economists have argued that it was caused by aggregate demand downturn which means decreasing in the demand power like aggregate consumption and investments resulting from a reduction in consumer confidence and this is because the Gulf War or by a decrease in money supply by the Federal Reserve here we have two views one concentrating about the downturn in aggregate demand which represent real sector the second one is speak about money supply which is monetary sector or nominal sector others have argued that it was caused by a decrease in aggregate supply brought about by an increase in the price of oil during the war or the delayed effects of tax increases and the new government regulation adopted in the late 1980s here we can see that we have an opposite explanation for the first one the second one concentrating about supply side the chocks like increase in oil prices which pushing the inflation up mainly cost push inflation and also because the delayed effect of tax reform 
applied in the late 1980s. Here we can see that there is no one reason behind the recession happened at this period from all economists behind the reason of this. Actually, all of these reasons could be behind this recession, but the importance of them, which mean which one is most important, will be already verified from one economist to another. The East Asian crisis from 1997 to 1999 the most significant international economic crisis since the Great Depression at least until recently and this is for sure before financial crisis the global financial crisis hit USA economy starting from the late 2000 Seven. Economists didn't forecast the East Asian crisis, but they believe that they achieved miracles, economic miracles, and they believe that these economies will not suffer from any disruption like crisis. in short term or medium term and some of them believe even for long term most disturbingly there was no agreement at the time among economists about the policy that should have been followed to best deal with the crisis in fact, the crisis occurred in countries that were previously thought to be model economies that were fundamentally sound. The problem of this crisis is the shock to the world. These economies, like Hong Kong, Singapore, Taiwan, Singapore, Malaysia, they was like a model economist. IMF and the World Bank refer to them as a successful models and they suggest the same process of growth of these countries to be applied everywhere for developing countries or even for transition economies as a successful stories but after this crisis this dream demolished and vibrated actually for some time however they return it back after few years with less confident Business cycles are extremely costly to a society, not just in terms of lost income, but in terms of disrupted lives, higher suicide and homicide rates, higher poverty levels and higher divorce rates, among other measures of well-being that have economics, social and personal effects which persist for a very long time. Business cycles not just hitting the economy with a high cost, economic cost, but also social cost. And here we can see is that some examples of these social costs. The higher suicide rates those people they feel that there is no hope for them to stay in this life and they already finish their life by suicide homicide those people is already try to be alone 
and getting out of the community like isolate the islands and suffering too much poverty level and hunger spread all over the economies marital problems occur between wives and husbands because the bad economic situations resulted at the end in the divorce rates hitting high all of this means the well-being of the people in any economy could affect it badly by business cycle the study of modern business cycle being was Keynesian economics which focused on the macroeconomics effect of market failure usually we look to the business cycle especially in the part of recession as a market failure as the free market cannot prevent this recession from happening however in case of Keynesian models the analysis of these business cycles is dealing with this case from macroeconomic perspective first all countries that experienced a depression were under gold standard this is a standard spread all over the world where every country using gold as a legal tender for international trade and the movement of gold from country to another country depends on the balance of payment surplus or deficit and maintained fixed exchange rates is another reason for this where central bank support their currency against foreign currencies second there were severe balance of payment imbalances in place when the gold standard was restored after world war first you can return to see that how much is the accumulation of gold in hand of USA by this time? And how much of this lose from Europe during this world war first? Third, asymmetries in the way the gold standard was administrated made it unstable and finally a massive international deflation was the result of a strict adherence to the gold standard and a naive macroeconomic policy financial innovation in the form of securitized home mortgage and financial derivatives and the trade and saving imbalances between China and US that fueled excessive debt and the asset bubbles in the United States. There are three major distinctions between recessions and major contractions, what we call depressions. Apart from just their size, first, major contraction depression tend to be international in nature not primarily isolated to just one country second major contraction depressions tend to involve the collapse of financial markets in general the banking industry in particular third 
major contraction depressions almost always begin with some sort of macroeconomic policy mistake in the form of runaway monetary and physical policy misaligned exchange rates deregulation of financial markets or all of the above this is the end of this lecture thank you very much